Hey everyone, uh, so I'm back again for another fun day of renovations. Uh, and, and today marks a, a turning point. So we've done a lot of demolition uh, so far, done a lot of breaking stuff down. We've done some rough work, right? You've seen me put up the drywall in the ceilings and, and you know, the drywall in the bathroom. Uh, but this is where, this is where it kind of gets real. And this is what, this is the type of work that I, I actually dread, right? You tore everything apart and you got everything back rough, but now you actually have to spend the time to make it look nice. And this is the hardest thing for me because oftentimes it's, it's kind of the most time consuming. Uh, and everything we've got lined up next is all like stuff that needs to look nice. So in here we've done the first coat of, of mud, but now we actually have to go over again and get it all nice and smoothed out and make it look good. Same thing in here, and, and I would say consider this the update for the week. The only thing I actually managed to get done this week when I wasn't filming was one coat on the walls in here. But essentially everything in here go forward is gonna be more detail oriented. And that's that's something that's really mentally, it's not physically hard, although it, it can be physically hard, but it's it's more mentally for me, right? I know what it's gonna to take to do it. And I, I have this fear about not doing it right, I guess is, is the best way to describe it. And on top of all that, we gotta do this floor too. And tile can be tricky even when everything's perfectly flat. That's not the way it is in this room. So I know whatever I end up doing next, I got my work cut out for me. So when I get to that point, it kind of makes me feel like, I don't want to do it anymore. And one of the things that I found is that when I'm faced with a bunch of different things like that, it's harder for me to be motivated. It's harder for me to get excited about stuff. And one of the things that I've learned in the past is that like when that happens, you just gotta, you just gotta keep going, right? You gotta show up. You gotta do as much as you can, right? Maybe it's just a little bit at a time, but you always gotta show up, put in the effort and, and, and just do your best, right? There's nothing else you can really do. And I find that for me, uh, when I'm faced with a bunch of different things like this, that's that's what helps me get through. So that's what we're doing today. We're showing up, <laughs> we're gonna do our best, and at the end of the day, right, hopefully this looks relatively good, and I'll have minimal sanding to, to deal with in here, right? But but even if it doesn't, even if I have to sand it a bunch, right, I think we can still make this look good. And the bathroom's the same way, right? Just a lot of drywall in there. The bathroom floor, the tile on the other hand, that's, that's a little bit different. When we do get to that point, we're gonna take our time, we're gonna make sure we do it right, and and again, right? All of this is just us doing our best. So that's what it is. Thanks again for joining me today. I, I definitely appreciate those comments. It sounds like uh, some of you are, are right there with me or are going through some of this stuff in, in your own houses, which is super exciting. Uh, as a reminder, if you like this content, please like and subscribe, and we're just gonna get started. All right, so that guy that was just talking, he's got no idea what he's talking about. We're gonna do a quick recap because it actually influences what we can get done today. So what I've done is I've tied into the old plumbing with a, a PEX connector, and I've run a new line basically all the way there and over to that main uh, walk over here so you can see it right up here to this main trunk that goes into the house and i tied in my manifold here as well and at the time i told myself that at least this drain valve here was probably going to be temporary the reality is it's probably not i probably won't get back to this and i'm i'm personally okay with that right it's there to function it's not there for tenants to use and what i really needed in here was functioning water uh, so i need water to do the drywall stuff i needed to test this out but I also needed to be able to test out the plumbing that's that's upstairs, actually in the bathroom, to make sure that before I put that shower back together, right, there's no leaks, uh, everything's good before I, I put the, the go board on and then start putting the tile up. So we're probably not gonna get to that today, uh, but I wanted to share because that's the reason why we're not gonna get to it today, because I haven't done the water test yet. So that should come in a future video, but now you're all caught up in the very exciting goings on here in the basement. And actually, I didn't get this on film, uh, but at one point I, I had to chase a squirrel out of here. Behind that metal plate is a drain line that goes out somewhere. I don't know where it goes. But one day I heard a very distraught sound from down here and I went down and uh, yeah, there was a very wet, unhappy squirrel down here running around in the basement, not sure what he should do. So we got him out okay. He's, he's off doing squirrel things. I don't know what squirrels do, but they're off doing squirrel things somewhere. He's all set now. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do today uh, with this plus three is loosen it up a little bit. Uh, and that's actually what I need the water for. We're gonna use it for the top coat over the tape in here. Uh, one of the things that I found when working with this in the bathroom is that it's pretty, pretty, uh, I don't know what the word is, but it's not loose, it's tight. It's very hard, it, it's harder to work with. I want it to be a little bit wetter. All right, so in my opinion, which is a very amateur opinion, uh, that looks a lot better. I think it's gonna be a lot easier to spread because uh, I'm gonna be using some big tools today. All right, so I spoke too soon. I'm actually gonna start with just a, uh, I'm guessing this is an eight inch over here. So I've got a 12 and an eight. I don't actually have a 10. So where I've got a nice bevel joint, I'm just gonna start with, start with a smaller knife and just go straight across. All right, so I think it does make sense to switch to the slightly broader knife. Uh, and I will say loosening up the mud, good choice. <laughs>
All right, so I can already tell today's gonna be pretty challenging. Uh, that first one I did was a bevel joint, right? And I can still see the tape coming through in the back. Uh, so obviously I didn't do the best job on that joint. So I hope the other one's gonna be a little bit better, but I'm not holding out hope, but we'll see. We'll, we'll try the other bevel joints next. All right, so that one went a lot better. Uh, I think it had to do with me using the fiberglass tape and, and not poking and prodding it so much while I was while I was up there and while it was drying. Uh, so I'm, I'm hopeful, I think, for bevel joints in the future, uh, you know, assuming everything else goes well, I'm gonna choose a fiberglass tape. Uh, I also did the fiberglass on the butt joints. I'm not sure how that's gonna go. Uh, we'll, we'll find out in a few minutes, I guess. <laughs> All right, so I'm, I'm a little surprised. That actually went a lot uh, better and faster than I was expecting. So in an hour's time, I managed to do all of the bevel joints and then all of the butt joints. All right, so now for the bad news. All right, so that only took me an hour. So remember how I mentioned like everything I've got coming up next is, is kind of hard? I have to overcome that mental block and, and do two hard things in one day. So it's, yeah, showing up times two today. So I think with the mud I've got left, I'm just gonna do one more coat in the bathroom. I'll take you along with me for that. And then we might tackle some part of that shower. So, so stay tuned, we'll, we'll see how things go. So I'm here in the bathroom. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna do here is just knock down some boogers, I guess. I don't know what they're called, but little uh, flecks of drywall that aren't exactly smooth or left over from when I did the other side of the taping. Uh, it just makes my life a lot easier doing this now than if I were to do it as I was going through. Uh, because you find out after you've put some mud on, typically. And I'm just using a drywall knife for this. Typically there's nothing major, it's not worth sanding, it's just there's little guys that need some help getting off. Here's an example of what I'm talking about up here. Just boop, pop them off. Some are worse than others. All right, so the lighting isn't all that great in here. We're gonna do our best. What I did the first time was just one side of this, of this joint. Uh, so I did this bottom part. Now I'm gonna go back and do the, the other side. So this, this part up here. I used to always try and do two sides of the joint at the same time, uh, and I always got terrible results. So after doing some research, uh, what I've been doing is, is one side, and then today you're gonna to see me come back and do the other. Uh, so far it's going a lot better, right? I'm not gonna cut into the mud on the other side as I'm trying to get one side smooth. It takes a little longer, but I'm here anyway, and this is usually pretty quick, so I think it's worth it. All right, I'm switching back to the six incher. I think that's gonna give me better control overall. Uh, that other one is just too big. And unfortunately, it took me a little while to figure that out. Okay, so I did the inside corners of all of the opposite sides of what I had done before in this bathroom. Uh, and it looks it looks pretty okay. Again, I'm gonna have to sand more than anyone who does this for a living, and and that's okay, right? As long as I get that tape covered, I'll be okay. Uh, the the news is, and I'm not sure if it's good or bad, right? That took me like I don't know 20 minutes. So now I got to figure out what to do next. So I can't do the floor because I don't think I've got enough time to do that today. Uh, I can't do the walls in the shower because I haven't tested my plumbing yet. So I think that kind of tells me where it makes sense to start. We're gonna get that plumbing tested. So next time we're here, we can get the walls inside the shower up. All right. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just temporarily install this cartridge. Uh, unfortunately, this model didn't come with the little plastic covering that I think they normally do um, come with. So we're just gonna tuck this right in here. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do in here is install one of these uh, inline shutoff valves. Uh, so these are quarter turn. 
I get these on Amazon. They're by a company called uh, eField. The company name is eField USA, but they're made in China. Uh, I have installed uh, quite a few of these and they've always been great, at least so far. Uh, so I'm gonna do the same thing here. Um, one thing I do need to make sure of is that I'm clear of this wall with that handle. Uh, I would like to mount it out here, but I'm not sure if the water line is gonna, is gonna go that far. So uh, we'll see. And on this one, same thing, except because it's going in the opposite direction. Well, actually, you know what? I'm not sure if it's actually a bad thing to have these valves installed with the water running in the wrong direction. Um, I'm gonna look that up. All right, so I went and checked and it says that if you see an arrow on it, uh, that indicates the directional flow. There's no arrow on this one. And the internet also says most ball valves are omnidirectional. Uh, so I am gonna install this in the way that makes the most sense uh, for access, which is gonna be just like that. All right, so those two valves are in. I've got the valve up here in, which will block the water from coming just kind of straight out of here. Um, I've got these two things on the side here that are that should be off. These are shutoffs from inside. I'm not sure why those are there, but they're off. And just in case, I put some brass stops in both the vanity and toilet lines, uh, and that's for a very good reason. Uh, for those of you who have been with me for a while, you may remember uh, a video where upstairs I, I accidentally flooded that bathroom. Uh, so I've learned a lesson, right? I take no chances, right? We get those stops in there and the hot water lines aren't hooked up at all yet. So all that's really left for right now is to go downstairs, turn on the water, uh, and then slowly turn things on up here and see how it holds. All right, so the cold water is now on and I've got cold water in this, uh, this run right here. Now, I have to be careful because I don't have the hot water on and the hot water isn't connected downstairs. So this whole mixing valve, uh, I believe, I believe, I'm not sure. I believe what's gonna happen is if I turn on the hot water valve, then the water's gonna shoot down into the basement, which I don't want. So I'm gonna leave the valve I just installed for the hot water line closed. And I'm gonna turn these valves on one at a time. You'll notice I'm standing in the shower right now, so if something goes poorly, I'm right here. I'm, I'm gonna know. <laughs> All right, so hot water, or cold water, rather. All right, so now we have cold water all the way up to here on this side and it's stopped by this little stop valve there that's keeping it from going all the way to the mixing valve. So if I turn, I'm actually gonna turn this one back off. I'm gonna open up that stop valve. I just don't know how far that's supposed to come out. <laughs> we'll just do a little bit at first. I'll try that. All right, so now there should be water going through the mixing valve. All right. <laughs> Um, I want to open up this other one. All right, so now I believe it's gone throughout the entire fixture. And now it's up here as well. So I'm going to turn that off. Let's check here for leaks. I don't hear or see any. I'm going to open this up a little bit more. All right, so to test this, I'm going to take out the test plug. You know what? I probably don't actually need to test this, but I'm going to anyway. Um, I'm just going to put the shower head nozzle on here, just kind of loosely. Make sure this is off. Make sure that's open. Make sure that's off. I don't have enough hands for this. So I'll put that up there just in case. So I believe, I believe the fixture's off right now. Yeah, that's good. All right, so now, now we're gonna try for a little water coming out of there. All right, the water's not coming out. All right, so this is very confusing. <laughs> I wonder, I wonder if this is one of those where you need the hot and cold at the same time in order for it to work correctly. I'm gonna open up the other side of the stop to see what that does, but I wonder if you just need pressure on both sides. All right, so I think the problem here is that uh, there's something inside the, the valve mechanism uh, where essentially if the, for, exa for example, the cold water is off, but the hot water is on, right? That's a scald risk. If someone doesn't know, you go and turn it on, you're hit with a blast of hot water. Uh, I think what's going on is it needs equal pressure for both sides, but I honestly, I don't, 
know. I don't know. It's just what I've reasoned out from having experienced this before. So even though I hadn't planned for it today, uh, I guess that's 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 now my afternoon. I'm going to try and go hook up those hot water valves. Uh, I think I have everything that I'm needed to do that. Uh, but it wasn't what I had planned to do. And, I, you know, talking all big about everything going fast and, you know, having having plenty of time. Well, suddenly I have this new thing to do this afternoon that I wasn't aware of. It's, it's got to get done anyway. Uh, but yeah, surprise. Uh, so so we got to get that done before we can put the shower up. So now I have another excuse not to not to tackle that today. All right. So we're back down in the basement. Uh, I was fully planning on soldering a uh, uh, an adapter onto a copper water line, but I'm not sure I'm going to have to. And here's why. In an earlier video, what I did was I actually connected a T here uh, coming off the hot water tank for the hot water needs going this direction for for this downstairs apartment. What I think I can do is just remove this connector, uh, cut through the line and then rerun packs all the way in this direction. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, that way I get rid of a, a pretty considerable run of, of older copper. I'm not sure how old it is, but it's it's quite a bit older. And that way it'll be all pecs. It'll be all one line going from the hot water tank uh, all the way over to the fixtures uh, down here in that, in that bathroom. Uh, so there won't be any joints or anything like that to leak. So the first thing I like to do when I remove one of these is just find the back of the collar. Uh, usually there's a little ridge there and it's really that collar that holds it in. It's almost like a clip. I find that if I pull that clip out, it makes it a lot easier to remove this and because I'm not really in a tight space here that's not too bad okay. so now I've got that clip off pretty easily and that's just just a pair of vice grips which I always have with me now this is the hard part this is compressed on really well what I'm gonna do is just use my uh, copper cutters to cut this back just a little bit and then I'm gonna heat this up very slightly with a torch and then just pull it off all right and I'm going to so I've got that valve off um, I'm gonna cut this back a little bit further because I don't want the water that may still be in the line to leak on the boiler. One thing I think I've realized about this place is that I think there's high water pressure, so I'm gonna to have to install a pressure reducing valve uh, at some point, probably before I have the water on in here full time, uh, because it's, it seems like it's, it's pretty, pretty crazy. Never done that before either. All right, got a little valve I'm gonna open up here as well, which should result in some more water coming out, I think. I guess not. <laughs> Oop. Oh, almost got me. That was actually twisting pretty easy. I might just... No, that's too much. All right, so all I'm trying to do here is just warm it up. I'm not trying to heat it up at all, really. There's still water in that line. We're just cooling it off. There we go. Yeah, so nothing here is really warm. The other pipe isn't warm. It was just enough to get that pipe off. All right, so now all I'm gonna do is cut this pipe into sections to make it easier to work with. So this one is a short, short section that went back to the boiler. I love this thing, by the way. This uh, auto compressing pipe cutter, it's just, it was a great purchase. It was like double the price of the normal ones that you have to stop and turn every time, but it always does it like the exact right amount which is really handy because what I used to end up doing when I turned too much was flaring my pipe. That's even more of a mess you have to deal with. So for now, I'm really just gonna work my way back here, cut out this pipe in sections. Um, unfortunately, it's all embedded in the fiberglass here, so we do what we can, but it's all messy and I know I'm gonna be itchy when I go home. I check real quick to make sure I was cutting to the right piece of pipe. All right, so if you watch my, one of my prior videos, you probably recall me saying something about not liking the position of this, this valve that was going up to the shower. It's the hot water line. Uh, so one of the great things about PEX is that I can reposition it within reason. Um, and that's just what I did. Uh, so now, I'm just gonna screw this in. It's gonna be a little bit more in line with uh, the other, other plumbing. So I won't have to do anything funny when I'm, when I'm running that new line or less funny things when I'm running that new line. So my new hot water line is going to run in this channel right here. I've got the hot water inlet for the vanity here. And I've got the hot water inlet for the shower here. I'm honestly not sure why I didn't think of that when I installed the first time, but better late than never. When I'm running new packs, I always like to start somewhere in the middle first, at least, and then kind of work my way back and then overcut my line a little bit. I usually end up using the pack stubs for something. And I find that it's a little bit easier overall. I think what I'm gonna to do today though, is I'm gonna run kind of up behind some of this stuff and then down below uh, as I go towards the, the water inlets, just keeping in line with how some of the other stuff is done here. Uh, but what I am gonna do 
is I'm gonna run it along the bottom of one of the joists. So I think I'm gonna go a little more up and over than I thought I was, um, just because of some of what I've already got running here. Right, so this should be plenty. One thing I find that does help as you're trying to get the pecs under control is these little clips here. I don't pound them in all the way. This is really just to keep it from curling back on itself. And these I feel like work well at most angles. And in general, they're easy to remove and fairly forgiving. All right, so one of the first things I wanna do here is just create a little shutoff valve. And do that, I'm just gonna come over here. Cut my pecs to length. So now we got this on, we'll go attach this side. That way we're just tying into this one side while we're working up in the air. Here's the part I always find <clears throat> to be a little tricky. I gotta get that cut straight and to the right length and then in there. Oh, that wasn't so bad. Well, this is just a challenge with a limited number of hands. All right, so with that we're tied in, we got a nice new quarter turn ball valve there. And running along this way, I've got some very loosely fixed in connectors here. I find that helps out a lot as I'm tugging on these lines because they have a tendency to curl back up on themselves. So wherever possible, I always try and find something to affix it to. It's especially useful when you're dealing with the three quarter inch lines because those are, those are pretty rigid. So now, uh, unfortunately, you've, <laughs> you've got a shot here between two of the sore lines, so enjoy that. So now that I've got that, that hot water line all connected, uh, I just have these, these two valves here that I need to connect up. The water line is right here, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a T right here, continue down to this one, and then continue over, just run that T over to this one. So I'm just cutting the lines, putting a T in. All right, so if you had told me in the morning that I would be down here in the basement running those water lines today, I would have told you were nuts, right? That wasn't part of the plan for the day. It wasn't anything that was on my radar. Uh, the good thing is, right, I got all my tools here. I've got all the stuff. If I need to, I can. I'm not blocked because I don't have to wait for anyone because I do everything, right? There's a little detour. And, and honestly, for the time that I have today, uh, it was a pretty good detour because I'm going to get out right on time for the thing that I'm going and doing this afternoon with my kids. So yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited. So we've got a T here going over to this valve, which goes up to the vanity, the hot water line for the vanity. And we've got one here that we just connected, which is going to go up to the hot water line for the shower. I'm going to leave these off for now. Get this water line in white running all the way down through and then over to the boiler. So all in all, plans changed, but we made the best of it. And don't worry, I'm not signing off today before I make sure that hot water run is working in the bathroom. So let's go check on that now. All right, so we're back, uh, moment of truth. <laughs> so I'm gonna hold this bucket up above my head while I turn these valves on. It's a little tricky, so bear with me. Just in case. Uh, definitely energized. Let's see how we do here. <laughs> Success! Success! Doesn't sound like anything exploded on me either, so that's good. All right, so now I have zero excuses to not start putting up the go board here uh, in the shower and, and working next time to get that all buttoned up. So all in all, I'm, I'm super pleased with how today went, right? We got the, the first coat here in the bedroom up on the ceiling. Uh, we did the inside corners in the bathroom. And we got that hot water line run, and, and that wasn't even, that was never part of the plan, right? I thought just the ceiling in here was gonna take me all day. Well, we got in there, we tested out that shower valve, found it didn't work, we went downstairs, we said, we're gonna run the hot water line, right? That's that's how we're gonna finish the day. And if I had taken on something bigger today, I wouldn't have had time, because it's, I'm, I'm right now, I'm running up against the clock like about 10 minutes before I gotta, before I gotta get on the road. Uh, so really, everything I feel like worked out for the best today, and I feel like I got a ton done. So all in all, I gotta say, I'm, I'm pretty happy. Uh, I hope you enjoyed being part of that journey. Uh, if you like this content, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.